Hello everyone, I'm Hannah Drum, and today I will be showing you how to work with some of the tools of Cohop. I will be working with the Patrons and Circulations tools and the last three additional tools. So, let's get started. To start, let's look at the Comments tool. This tool allows librarians to approve or delete comments and reviews made by patrons. As you can see, there are no current comments listed, but here is what they would look like. It shows you the name of the commenter, the title being commented on, and the comment itself. On the far right, you can either approve or delete the comment based on what it is and how you feel about it. This tool also offers you the ability to look at all of the previously approved comments. This way, you can go back at any time and either unapprove or delete a comment made by a patron. Next, we have the Import Patrons tool, which, as its name suggests, allows you to import new patrons into the system. You can do this in one of two ways. The first and easiest way is to simply import your patron's information by filling in the available boxes. And I will admit, there are a lot of boxes. At the bottom of the page, it will prompt you on what to do if there is a record already like this in your system. You can either ignore the new information and keep the existing record, or you can overwrite the existing record with your new information. After you're done, simply press import. The other option is to create, sorry, is to download the starter CSV file with its columns and enter the information by hand and then upload it onto your files. After that, you simply go down, select how you'd like it to deal if there's an existing file, and import. This is the Overdue Notices and Status Triggers tool. It is very helpful with reminding patrons when their books are overdue. The first thing to do here is to decide on, de on a delay. A delay is the number of days after an item has become due that your system waits before sending a notice. So let's say that we would like our delay to be four days. After you've picked a delay, you can go through and decide on a type of notice letter. As you can see, there are a variety of options. There's even an option to send a second and a third notice letter if need be. If for some reason the notices do not get a response from your patrons, you can also use this section to restrict a patron's access, making it so they cannot check out any new items until they have returned the ones that are overdue. Here is an example of an overdue notice. With the Patron Card Creator tool, you can make a variety of different and unique cards for your patrons. The first step is to decide what type of layout you would like to use. You can either use a layout that's already been created, or you can make a new one. For the layouts, you simply have to decide where you'd like your text fields, what you'd like them to say, where you'd like your barcode to be, and whether or not you would like an image source. Next, we will deal with the templates. The template section deals with the type of cardstock being used to create the cards. Simply fill in the general information that came with your cardstock. The printer profile mostly deals with the type of printer being used to, pr to produce the cards. It's all general information you can find on your printer. The last section is the batch. A batch is a collection of patrons for whom you want to generate cards. The batch number can be as large or as small as you would like. For example, if you wanted to make a new batch, you go here, add items, and then sort through your patron lists and select the ones that you would like to be included in the new batch for your cards. The deleting old patrons and anonymizing checkout history tool does pretty much exactly what it says. This tool is very straightforward. Simply select the task of deleting a patron or anonymizing checkout history, then use the calendar provided to select a date. The process will delete all the records before the selected date. After you've done that, simply click Next. It will then show you a confirmation page telling you how many patron 
profiles have been deleted, and how many checkout histories have been anonymized. If you're alright with that number, simply click Finish, and you're done. The Badge Patron Modification Tool allows you to make adjustments to a group of patrons all at the same time. You can either type in the card names individually here, or you can create a file containing several card numbers and load them all through here. Once you've loaded all your card numbers, simply press continue. It should take you to a page that looks like this. From there, the system will provide a list of all the patrons whose card numbers you already inputted. Then you can go through and select which patrons you would like to change. Underneath, there will be a form in which to place the changes. Simply select which things you would like to change, your name, first name, categories, to let the system know what is being altered. Fill in the information in the boxes and press Save. Much like the comment tool, the Tags tool allows patrons to add their own tags to specific books. As you can see, we don't have any pending tags at the moment, but if we did, they would look something like this. The display will show you the tag or terms that have been suggested, the number of books they've been suggested to, and the date. By selecting the term, you can look at what specific books they have been applied to. From there, you can decide whether to approve or reject the suggested tags. As you'll notice, to the right there is also a filter on the main page so that you can search through all of the tags in the collection. You can even go back at a later date, such as here, and remove the tags if you find they are no longer applicable to the books. The Upload Patron Images tool allows you to add pictures of your patrons to their profiles. You can either do this individually by selecting an image file and then entering the patron's card number and clicking Upload. Or, if you want to upload multiple images, at the same time you must open a text box, like this, and include both the patron's card number, followed by a comma, and the name of the image. You must then make this into a zip file. From there, you go back to the main page, click Zip File, choose File, and Upload. After the upload, you will get a confirmation key, like this one, detailing that the upload was successful, how many were uploaded, how many were changed, and letting you know that the process is over. The News Entry tool allows you to write up important information and have it posted on the librarian's interface or even a receipt, a receipt slip. Simply go and select New Entry, provide the location you'd like it appear, the title, publication date, expiration date, and your message. Then click Submit. If you've decided to have your message appear on the library interface, it'll show up like this. If instead you've decided to have it on the end of a receipt slip, it will appear here at the bottom. The task scheduler is an easy way to select and run reports whenever you want them. Simply input the time, the date, the type of report you wish to run, the output format which is either text or URL, and your email. Click save and it will be emailed to you. You can even go back and look over past saved reports like these and select to rerun them or delete them. The last tool I'm going to show you today is the Quote Editor tool. This allows you to add new quotes or delete old ones from your list. To add a quote, simply select Add Quote, enter your source, and then enter the quote itself. Then hit Enter. The quote should appear at the bottom of your list. You can also add quotes by importing them. You can import quotes by filling out a standard CVS file and uploading it to the quote section here. To delete a quote, simply find the quote you want to delete, select its ID number, and then hit delete quotes and confirm your deletion. And you're done. Hello, I'm Rebecca Driscoll, and I will be demonstrating some of the tools that Koha has to offer. I'll be covering the catalog tools as well as the first half of the additional tools. Let's start off with the batch item deletion tool. 
These batch item options allow you to view the information of many items at one time. They may be accessed through a barcode file, an item number file, or by scanning in the barcodes of individual items. For the purpose of these demonstrations, I will be scanning in the individual barcodes of books by Garth Nix that are in the catalog. Hit continue, and this grid will appear. Using this, you can see all sorts of information regarding the items, including their status, their permanent location, their current location, their shelving location, and so on. To hide some of these columns, you can do so at this top with these top options and then select which fields you want to view. For the batch item deletion tool, you can select individual items to delete and then delete these selected items. What if you wanted to edit some of the information that we saw in that grid we just pulled up? You would use the batch item modification tool to do this. Again, you can indicate a specific file or use individual barcodes. Here we see the same grid. All of this information in these fields can be edited at the bottom of this page. Some of the boxes are drop down options or you have to fill them in yourself. These little check boxes on the sides will delete the subfield and uh, clear that data for the items. Don't forget to save your information before you leave that page. If you want to send your data to other libraries or services or to back up your data, you may do so with the export data tool. You can choose between exporting bibliographic records or authority records. You can specify certain items to export, for example, item types or the library that they're at, a call number range, or a start date and end date. If you want to select only specific, if you want to exclude rather, uh, certain bibliographic fields, you can do so with this option. You would then select your file format and name your file before exporting them. The same pretty much applies for the authority records. You can indicate specific authorities that you want to use indicate fields that you don't want to include, and name your file before exporting. If you want to take inventory of your collection, you can use the Inventory Stock Taking tool. This tool allows you to upload a barcode file that you may already have after having gone through the stacks with a portable barcode scanner. You may also indicate which items you want to check for by selecting a specific library or filtering by shelving location. You can also select items that are maybe lost or missing or any other kind of status. And if you want to ex exclude books or items that are out of the library on loan, you can check this box. We'll use fiction for this example. And Koha generates a list that can then be printed out and taken out into the stacks to check for these books. Using the label creator, you can use, you can create different kinds of layouts, including barcodes. You can manage or create layouts, templates, profiles, or batches of items. Templates are created based on the type of stock card or label that you are using. You can indicate uh, the manufacturer, the different parameters of the label that you'll be using. Profiles allow you to make adjustments to a template just before printing it off in case the alignment is off on your printer. The layout option allows you to change the appearance of your labels, which include the, uh, the text type and the font size. Finally, batches of barcodes can be created by scanning into individual items or by adding items in the catalog. To print out these batches, you would then go to Manage Batches, select which batch you want, and then export them to print. The Quick Spine Label Creator does exactly what it says. <laughs> you can just scan one barcode for the book you need the label for, but it is important to note that there are no lay layout or template options for you to use, so you need to be careful when using that option. If you have bibliographic and or authority records that you have saved in MARC format, you may use the Stage MARC Records for Import tool to import them into Koha. I exported the book files from Koha so that I could show the next option for this tool. So I would select this MARC file and upload it. Here you can see that you can make comments about this file, record the type, and then before entering them into the catalog, you can indicate whether you want to look for matching records or not, and then what kind of option you would like to have if Koha finds that it is there are existing records. So we'll say, just keep that.
for now, and we'll stage them for import. And the progress is monitored down here. That's done. This page will come up to let you know that it is done. And then we can go to the Manage Staged Mark Records, which you can also access through the main tools page. So these are the items that came up in my import. And it looks like there are some matches. And if I were to add these to the catalog, um, I could still change which action would happen for them. And once I decide that I think everything is to my liking, I can say import this batch into the catalog. And just so you know, that option again is available on the tools homepage at this, this option. Finally, you can upload a local cover image to some of the materials in the catalog. Um, to demonstrate this, I've found an alternative cover for Sabriel, one of the Garth Nix books I've been working with for this video. So I can select this file and upload it. The upload progress will come up. I can say that it's an image file. And then I need to enter the cover biblio number, which is different from the item barcode. I think for Sabriel, the number is just 14. If there had been existing covers for it, you could indicate that you want to replace them, and then you can process the images. And they should show up in the catalog the next time you look. So those are all the catalog tools. Next, I'm going to briefly go over the first three additional tools. <clears throat> Defining library closings and holidays using the calendar tool will allow COA to set appropriate due dates. To add an event, you simply select the date that it falls on. You can indicate how long the holiday or event lasts till the title, its description, and then you can decide if you want to indicate that it will repeat. So you can say it repeats every day of the week or yearly, etc. And you can decide if you want to copy it to all of your library branches or not. Then you can save it. And if you want to edit a holiday, you would simply click on the date again. Using the CSV tool, Profiles tool, you may define how you would like your cart or lists to export. For example, you may want to include only the title, author, and physical description of the items in a cart or list. You can also edit this profile after it's been created in the Edit Existing Profile tool. So for example, this is one that I created earlier, and it just has the title, author, physical description in it, and I can change any of these options if I choose to, and then submit it. Finally, the option actions that are performed in Koha can be tracked through log files, which can then be viewed in the log viewer. You may view items or actions performed by specific librarians who are defined by numbers. You can indicate specific modules to see who's been using them or an action and all sorts of other fields. So let's just, for example, look at the, let's look at all the modules. And then we can see which librarian did what thing to which module. <laughs> And that is it for me. Thank you for joining us for this tutorial. We hope you found it helpful and informational. Have a great day.